Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today I'm looking at the Kansas City Chiefs and going over whether or not I think they should try and trade for wide receiver Julio Jones. But before getting to that topic, question for those of you viewing, what do you think Julio Jones' trade value is still worth? I think he's worth a first round pick, second round pick, third round pick, fourth round pick, whatever it is. Comment down below what you think Julio should go for on the trading block. But getting straight into it, I'm going to say right now, I'm not a Chiefs fan and I would probably not be the biggest fan of this happening. Like Julio Jones going to the Chiefs is almost as bad as Kevin Durant going to the Warriors. It's just like you're going to the best team in the NFL. It's just going to make it, I don't want to say unfair because football is different, but it would just be an absolute super team. I seriously think Julio Jones to Patrick Mahomes might be just as good as when Tom Brady got Randy Moss. Obviously, Brady and Moss were in their primes kind of then, and Mahomes is in his prime, but Julio isn't. But you guys get the reference. It would just be that lethal to the NFL. And again, even though I'm not a Chiefs fan, I'm not going to act like if I was a Chiefs fan or if I was a part of the Chiefs organization, I wouldn't want this to happen. And me even not being a Chiefs fan, this doesn't mean I don't think it would be a good move for them. I mean, if you could get a receiver that is top five at their position in the NFL, and I know there's debate about Julio still being top five. To me, if he's healthy, he's still top five receiver. And to pair him up with a top three tight in the NFL and then possibly another top five wide receiver in the NFL, and Tyreek Hill, that's debatable as well. That's got Super Bowl run written all over it. I mean, looking at the Chiefs right now, they're already a Super Bowl team. They won it two years ago. They visited last year and this year, heading into this season. They're looking like they're going to go again. They're better than they were in 2020. They completely rebuilt the offensive line. They got Orlando Brown Jr. They got Mike Remmers. They got Joe Tooney. They got Kyle Long. They have Austin Blythe. They drafted Creed Humphrey. This is a completely rebuilt offensive line. Like, going into the offseason, I think a lot of NFL fans were saying, finally, the Chiefs have a weakness that teams could pivot towards is to give them pass rush, blitz, pressure the quarterback, pressure Mahomes. The offense is finally weak, and now it is complete opposite. The Chiefs now have one of the best O-lines in the NFL. That's how big of a turnaround they have. And they're pretty much stacked everywhere else. Everywhere else. Clyde edwards hilaire is a great rookie running back. We know how good Mahomes is. The receiving core, even without Julio, you got the fastest guy in the NFL, Tyreek Hill. One of the best tight ends in the NFL, Travis Kelsey. You have more speed outside of Tyreek Hill, McCole Hardman, and... Uh, Demarcus Robinson, and then on defense, you got Frank Clark, Taco Charlton, Chris Jones, Tyran Matthew, Javarius Ward. You guys know who the Chiefs are. I mean, if you know the NFL, you know how good the Chiefs are. Just adding Julio Jones to that roster, I, it's, I don't want to say they're an instant Super Bowl competitor because they already are right now, but adding him to this roster could seriously on paper become one of the best teams of all time. Just that's how good Julio Jones is, and that's how good the Chiefs already are. Again, I'm not a Chiefs fan, and I would be against this happening just because, you know, that's not my team. I would run Julio Jones to go to a team I'm for, but that doesn't mean I'm against it being a bad move on their part. To me, if you could get Julio Jones for a decent deal, you know, a day two pick around, there's already been some mock trades of the Chiefs offering a second and third and sixth round pick in return to get Julio to get Julio and a sixth round pick. Basically, you just gave up Julio for a second and third round pick, and to me, if that's a guy that's going to take you to Super Bowl and possibly win it, a second and third round pick is an absolute steal. And like I said, the possibility of Julio being on this team is just limitless for this offense. Patrick Mahomes has thrown for 50 touchdowns without Julio Jones. He could definitely do it with them. This offense is probably one of the best, if not the best in the NFL already with just Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey. Now imagine how big of a tear grab there will be if they got Julio Jones. And of course, this is pending him being healthy and him being the same guy but assuming Julio will be able to turn around, especially on the Chiefs offense with Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid, maybe we've never even seen the best of Julio Jones now that he's with the Mahomes and the Andy Reid offense. Who knows? Anything's possible. Of course, the Chiefs, I just don't get why you would not do it. If you want to solidify a Super Bowl ring and nothing's guaranteed, of course, they could go out and get Julio and Patrick Mahomes could get hurt and that was all for nothing. But you guys know what I mean. If you want the absolute best odds at one more Super Bowl run this year, go for it. I mean, obviously, there's a couple other variables to consider, you know, of course, price of what Hulu's just going to cost towards the salary, not just, of course, what he's going to cost in the trade, but salary, I believe the numbers were he's going to cost $15 million in 2021, but then in 2022 and 2023, he would cost $11 million a year. And to me, Julio Jones, a Hall of Fame receiver, $11 million a year is a bargain. Just for comparison, Nelson Aguilar, to the Patriots signed a two-year, $22 million deal, $11 million a year. You're going to tell me Julio Jones and Nelson Aguilar should be making the same amount of money? Definitely not. That is an extreme tier gap, and this is almost a steal for Julio Jones, no matter who gets him. If it's the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Ravens, the pa Patriots, Niners, whoever is trading for him, Colts, Titans, 
$11 million a year after 2021 is an absolute steal for a Hall of Fame type of receiver. And of course, I understand he's getting up there in age and he's got injured this past year. But before last year, Julio's been healthy pretty much his whole career. You know, there's been seasons where he's missed a game or two, but he's pretty much always there to rely on. He's played through injuries. He's played through hamstring issues. This is only really his past year where he dealt with injuries. And he was on a Falcons team that wasn't really fighting for the playoffs or anything. I think if they were still a Super Bowl team or a playoff team last year, we would have seen Julio play through the pain. You know, the Chiefs on the Chiefs roster, this is a team he doesn't need to be there 17 games a year. You know, he could kind of do load management. I know that's not really an NFL thing, but with 17 games and an older receiver who's sometimes injured, it's not going to kill the Chiefs if Julio takes a game or two off by any means because they're already one of, if not the best team in the NFL. Like I said, my instant thought is just Kevin Durant going to the Warriors, already, already the best team in the sport, and now they're getting one of the best players in the sport added to their team. It's just insane. I'm kind of for it. I'm not like for super teams. And of course, like I said, I'm not for Julio Jones going to the Chiefs, but I'm for seeing all-time teams come to better come together and I get to watch them that's just awesome to me again to me if you could figure out the money and the Chiefs have a lot of money to already being spent on Mahomes he's the highest paid quarterback in the NFL Travis Kelsey is a top paid tight end Tyreek Hill gets his money defense gets their money between Frank Clark Chris Jones and Tyron Matthew you know the three of them combined their entire contracts of the Chiefs are probably pushing two three hundred million dollars a lot of money is being spent on big time players on this Chiefs team and you just got a pretty Built offensive line that's going to cost money. Orlando Brown Jr. wants his money. Joe Tooney got five years, $80 million. Kyle Long isn't cheap. All right, he's decently cheap coming out of retirement considering his history of being a pro bowler. But still, money is already being spent on the Chiefs. They're going to have to figure something out for 2021. Something's going to have to be renegotiated probably or restructured. But I, like I said, 2022-2033, million is definitely affordable. And I think the Chiefs are looking to spend a little money. I mean, Andy Reid was trying to recruit Juju Smith, you know, texting him pictures of the Lombardi Trophy. And Juju Smith, I believe, I'm thinking off the top of my head, but I believe he got $8 million from the Steelers. So if the Chiefs were willing to match that, that's already $8 million. You got to find three more for Julio. Again, this is just, there's no reason the Chiefs should not be considering it, and especially with teams in your own division, the Chargers and the Raiders considering Drafting Julio or trading for Julio Jones, you don't want him to go to a team, you know, that's going to be competing against you. So not only did you miss out on Julio, but your biggest rival got better. That is not something you want to see if you're the Chiefs. And that's the same same goes for the Chargers and Raiders. They don't want to see the Chiefs get him. But I'm just saying there's going to be high bids for Julio Jones. You've got to be the team that wins it. If you want to be a serious Super Bowl competitor, Julio Jones can make you that type of team. But at the bare minimum, the Chiefs. I'm not saying they have to get Julio and it's not going to make or break them if they don't get Julio. I still probably see them coming out of the AFC and going to the Super Bowl, but I'm just saying if they want to solidify Super Bowl win, Julio would help. But at the bare minimum, at least make a phone call. See what is Julio going to cost. At least give some effort. At least know you tried. And that's at least enough for me to at least see you attempted instead of saying, nah, we're good. I mean, if Julio went to the Chargers or Raiders for a second and third round pick, and the Chiefs didn't even make an effort to offer that, I'd be a little disappointed if I was a Chiefs fan or just a Chiefs player that they didn't give up that small amount of draft capital for an all-time type of player. Again, I'm not a Chiefs fan, but this would just be cool to see to form an all-time super team. And I'm excited to see Julio get traded. I'd love to see him just get traded anywhere, no matter where it be. I want to see the NFL get shooken up. Chiefs, this is just the team we're talking about for this video. But as always, guys, I do want to hear your thoughts on this Chiefs team. If they got Julio Jones... There's no way they're not Super Bowl favorites, in my opinion. And there's no way we don't almost see a Bucks and Chiefs rematch again. And obviously, it's easier said than done, and nothing's guaranteed, but I see it happening. But again, comment down below what you think Julio Jones is still worth. And as always, and of course, thanks for watching, guys. Tune in the morning.